I've seen three cases of tuberculosis just in the last year from illegal immigrants that are coming into just our community. In this letter, Ritz asked the governor to invoke the state's emergency catastrophic health act. The Department of Health can go in and screen these people for communicable diseases. Ritz says he wants to keep diseases like tuberculosis, syphilis, and leprosy out of Oklahoma. The people that are coming in are not immunized, and they bring in certain diseases that will be foreign to our population. We are daily bombarded with screaming website headlines and alarmingly loud proclamations about how much dangerous disease is crossing the American Southwest border at this time. Yet every time we seek to uncover the facts, the amount of illness always seems to turn up surprisingly low in relation to these reports. So the time has come to uncover some hard facts and perhaps put the hyperbole to rest about what is happening with immigration along the American southwestern border. Joining us now is the president of the American Health Policy Institute and the former deputy secretary at the Department of Health and Human Services under George W. Bush, Tevi Troy, joins us on Newsmax. Tevi, thanks so much for being here. Thanks for having me, Ed. I'm glad to clear some stuff up on this. Let's try and clear up one of them first of all. There was a, a certain unnamed congressman who brought up the words Ebola in his statements about crossing the southwestern border. I know for a fact last time I've checked there's no Ebola that has crossed the border here. Is it fair to say that we are getting hit with an awful lot of hyperbole here? Yeah, it, Ebola is not a concern I would have from people crossing. I mean, the, the, the truth is if somebody had Ebola, they, they wouldn't even be able to make that trip and Ebola is something that's found in Africa and is not, uh, we've not seen evidence of it in Latin America or in the U.S. at this point. So I'm, I'm not too worried about Ebola. That doesn't mean there are no health concerns, but I'm not worried about Ebola per se. Tell us what the health concerns are then, because again, we're bombarded with dozens of different diseases, including we just heard syphilis and leprosy as well. So give us an idea of what you understand is the reality. Well, for syphilis, I mean, there are ways to prevent contracting that, and I, you know, I urge people to exercise caution on that front. Uh, the, the diseases that I've heard that there have been uh, some prevalence of, there's been some uh, some scabies. There's lice. It's not technically a disease, but it is a public health condition. Um, scabies, uh, um, tuberculosis, which you mentioned in the intro, is is a potential concern. One case of H1N1, which is a form of influenza. So, so there are some cases. The truth is, these people are being screened for diseases as they come in. There is some kind of HHS screening process that's taking place. I wish HHS would have a little more transparency in the process so we could learn a little bit more about what's going on, but there are, there are some political ramifications here and they're not so eager to let us know everything that's happening. But. Ebola and leprosy are not high on my uh, my worry list right now. I'm going to bring up a statement here that I'm going to read for you, and our audience will see it as well up here on a graphic. This is what I alluded to a few moments ago. This is uh, Republican Congressman Representative Phil Gingry. This was his letter to the director of the Centers for Disease Control. Reports of illegal immigrants carrying deadly diseases such as swine flu, dengue fever, Ebola virus, and tuberculosis are particularly concerning. Many of the children who are coming across the border also lack basic vaccinations, such as those to prevent chickenpox or measles. This makes those Americans that are not vaccinated, and especially young children and the elderly, particularly susceptible. Now, when we talk about the fact that we're, we're getting down to vaccinations here, isn't it fair to note that a lot of these children who are coming in from South America are coming in from countries who have socialized medicine, and a lot of them are vaccinated, as, as I believe I saw, 96, 97 percent, a, a monstrously high number of children who come from these countries are vaccinated. You know, there, there are pretty good um, uh, vaccination rates, I would say, th throughout most of the, the Western Hemisphere. And, and I think for the vaccination problem, if there are people who are not vaccinated, I think that's one of the issues that gets taken up before they enter school, which, you know, they, they're coming into the U.S. So I, I would assume that um, they, they have to have some kind of vaccination form. And if they can't demonstrate that they've had these vaccinations, they may, they may have to get those vaccinations. So, um, so, so it, it is true having people who are not vaccinated is a problem. And we've seen, let's say, um, uh, some measles outbreaks from people who were not vaccinated. I'm not saying they came from Latin America, but I'm, I'm just saying that, uh, that if you're not vaccinated, it is a problem but I don't think that is, has been a primary concern here either. All right, now here's uh, some of the notes, and I just brought this up here. Guatemala, Honduras, El Salvador, and Mexico, the four countries sending the largest numbers of unaccompanied minors to the U.S., according to a Pew study, all have higher measles vaccination rates than the United States. Is that true? Um, I, I, don't, I can't say that I know the uh, measles vaccination rates in, in every country south of the border. I do know that there, there are uh, way too many people who have the uh, opportunity to opt out of measles vaccinations in the U.S., and that's something that, uh, that I would like to see less of. Uh, 
but but again, the, the, this is something that um, should uh, these people enter school, these kids enter school, um, that, that, that would be sorted out there. Uh, the, the other issue is just a larger issue, which is just where you said that you've had this issue of uh, unaccompanied minors coming across the border, and that, that in itself is, is a problem and something we should wor be worried about as well. But we should point out as well that what you were saying, there is screening here. Doesn't it get lost sometimes in the whole discourse here that there is at least something being done? I'm going to amend that also by saying with the tremendous flood that comes over, it's fair to say that you could have mistakes. Yeah, you know, and th this is an important point. I mean, and the critics of what's going on uh, down at the border, and you know, I, I have my concerns as well. Uh, on the one hand, they're saying, well, it's terrible these people are coming in and, and not screened and they, they have a, a public health concern. On the other hand, the fact of the screening is part of a regularization process that's taking place. These people are being screened and looked at and registered in some way and then sent somewhere else in the country. And the, effectively, it means they're, they're here for, for the long haul, um, even though they, they are illegal. So, um, you know, on the one hand, you want... You, you want people to be screened. On the other hand, the this regularization process is leading to a situation where we have a lot of people who are effectively have come into the country illegally and there's no real mechanism to change that fact. I think you touched on this a little bit ago, maybe about uh, 40 seconds we have left here. If Health and Human Services was at least being a little more transparent, a lot of this hyperbole and a lot of this fear would probably go away, you believe? Uh, yeah, I think so. I, th I think HHS, again, for political reasons, isn't really saying every, every disease they're finding and all the, the problems they're finding because they know that that could be exaggerated and then, and then um, highlighted. So, uh, But I think more transparency is just generally a good thing in this area, and then we could really sort out what's going on here. So is the simplest thing to say here is, and again, you know, we, we, we try to deal at, at, on both sides here and cover it, listen to some of these things but some people are just sort of parroting rumors that they hear and rumors are the most dangerous things when you get down to any sort of disease control correct look i think we need to secure our border i don't yes. think we should panic about um uh, about diseases going rampant and that does not appear to be what's going on it does not appear hey i very much tevi i very much appreciate this there are so many other issues that we could talk about here unfortunately we're all out of time please come back and let's do this again but thanks for setting us straight happy to do it all right. It is simply something to look at. Tevi Troy points it out. We have said it here on this program several times. Yes, there are problems. Yes, the borders need to be controlled. But sometimes there's just a little too much hyperbole and a few rumors going out there. Calm it down. Let's get the facts on a daily basis. Next up, off to New York and the Daily Call with Steve Mulsberg, who follows us right here on the Newsmax TV network.